God bless you, continuing our lesson on today, amen? And so, essentially, God had sent a warning. Uh, God had begun to send judgment, and they did not take it to heart. God, help us to hear when you speak. And then the Lord goes on to say, verse 3, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feast, and take you away with it. What this is looking at is, when the Lord talks about corrupting their seed, Oftentimes, this was a judgment on their harvest because they were agricultural. And so their um, maintenance of their uh, supply of food as well as for their businesses, uh, their livelihood was linked to agriculture. And the Lord says, you know, part of the chastisement is your livelihood is going to be challenged. And people don't like it when something goes on with their money. Amen. Sometimes the Lord has to speak to us through our money getting funny. Things go on with our finance. Things go on with our careers. Sometimes it's the Lord trying to speak to us. And then he talks about dung upon your face. Well, we know what dung is. Uh, and this is a sign of dung on the face. is a, a sign of shame. That's going to come because of your solemn feast. Notice the Lord didn't say it was my feast. It's your feast. They took the feasts of the Lord, Feast of Tabernacle, Feast of Passover, and we've spoken about that in a previous lesson. They perverted the feasts. They did not carry them out the way the Lord said. So what happened is they took what was to be spiritual worship and perverted it into man-made religious activity. Worship and religious activity aren't always the same. God's calling, and we know from St. John 4 and 24, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so sometimes we fall into just religious activity as our substitute for true worship of God. But God is calling for true worship and not some artificial man-made substitute that happens when God is not in it and it's all about us. The Lord says there's going to be shame because of that. Verse 4, and you're going to know that I have sent this commandment unto you that my covenant might be with Levi saith the Lord of hosts. Now the Lord goes on and he talks more about Levi and we laid that foundation. He talked about in verse 5, my covenant with him was for life and peace and in the beginning he walked with me, he feared me, he honored me, he believed God. People talk about, you shouldn't be afraid of God. We're not talking about shaking in your boots type of fear only. That's a part of it. There's to be a reverential honor toward God. But also, there is an element of that shaking in the boots fear because God is God. And the breath you and I breathe is a gift from him. And God that sent the breath when he breathed into Adam can call that breath home. God speaks and men live. God speaks and men die. And we need to remember that. Amen? Sometimes, if you look at a family, children obey their parents. Some of it is out of an honor and a love. But some of their obedience to parents is of, there's an element of a fear recognizing the authority that the parents have. When my parents say, sit down, children need to understand, they need to sit down. Some of that is an element of a fear. That's what God's talking about. Amen? And this is a challenge for everyone who's a parent. How you parent your children lays a foundation of how they're going to understand God. And sometimes parents... Um, struggle in that, but it's an incredible, heavy responsibility. So we pray for the parents of the world. But how uh, children learn their interaction with their earthly parents does lay foundations for their understanding of their heavenly father based on interactions with their earthly fathers. Amen? And so the Lord lets them know here, you feared me at one time, but then you stopped. The next few verses are laying out the accusations of how there was no more truth in their mouth, but they perverted it. There was iniquity, which means hidden sin. Um, there was not truth in their mouth. They did not operate by equity, which is justice. Often the scripture speaks about the scales being unjust. When someone would come in, obviously, in a matter of business, in that day they didn't use currency, dollar bills and things of that nature. They often used lumps of gold or of precious metal, and they would have a weight on the scale 
that would be equal to, let's say, uh, two ounces. So when someone would bring their gold or their silver or whatever precious metal, when they put it on the scale, if it's exactly balanced, we know we've got two ounces of that precious metal. Well, what they would do by deception is put a weight on there that didn't really weigh two ounces, so they took advantage of the people. And God is always against injustice and unrighteousness. Amen? And so this is what happened here. Their scales were not just, and they engaged in iniquity. This talks about how the priest's lips should keep knowledge. This is verse 7. Keep knowledge, and they should seek the law to be in their mouth because they're messengers of the Lord. We are the Lord's representatives. We speak on behalf of him. We say that we know and love the Lord. Well, then what we say ought to be the word of God, and people should be able to trust us. Amen. He says in verse 8, you departed in the way and caused other people to stumble at the law. You've corrupted the covenant. All of these things often done for greed, for pride, for self-promotion, and that's not the will of the Lord. Darlings, look at chapter 3. This is powerful here. The Lord has challenged them about their sin, as he always does. By the way, the church's job is to challenge uh, ourselves as the church and challenge the world about sin. People say, don't talk about sin. The sinner already knows they're in sin. You don't need to say anything about it. You are defying the God of heaven because the God of heaven said, say something, speak to it. Here's the key thing. The Lord Jesus, our great example, spoke to the matter. He challenged those in sin that what they were doing, they had to come out of it. He challenged the religious leaders about their sin and said, you are whited over, painted over a graveyard. He challenged those that were not the religious leaders. There was the woman we know caught in adultery. He says, I don't condemn you, but go and sin no more. The Lord Jesus challenged people about sin, died because of the penalty of sin, dying on our behalf. He wasn't a sinner. We are. And he died on our behalf and then told us to go and do that likewise. Tell people the truth. You know, when we offer a person a solution, they're not going to be interested in a solution if they don't think they have a problem. Jesus Christ is the solution for man's penalty of his sin. The wages of sin is still death. Not only physical death, but eternal death. Forever separation from God. I wish hell wasn't true. I really do. But it is. Heaven's real. So is hell. Hell's real. So our job is to warn people how to stay out of there. How do you stay out? You receive Jesus Christ as Lord. He's the solution. But nobody's interested in the solution. If they don't think they have a problem, call a hell destination. But I've got to tell you, darlings, if Jesus Christ has not been made and received as your personal Lord and Savior, you've got a hell destination. But right here, right now, today, you can avoid that destination and instead make heaven your home by making Jesus Christ your Lord. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all born in sin. But if we will acknowledge, Lord, I'm a sinner, I know it. Forgive me, deliver me. Jesus died to pay the penalty for my sin. I know my sin will send me to hell, but Jesus was willing to pay, take that penalty for me. And now I accept him as my savior, his death in my place. I believe he's your son. He died on the cross. He was buried in a borrowed tomb, but he rose again and he lives. And because he lives, I can live also. I receive him as my savior and I will follow Jesus all the days of my life. The Bible says if we do that, God the Father will forgive our sin, cleanse our soul, transform us to what it's called as being born all over again. And we become followers of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. If you pray that prayer, the Lord will receive you. Hallelujah. Uh, you need to find a Bible believing and preaching and teaching church. Amen. Christian church, learn the word of God and become a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can go to our website, djmd.org. And there's information there for those that have Receive the Lord as Savior. Amen. And if you have questions about that, you can email and contact us through the website. Hallelujah.
But our verse ends today, our lesson ends today with the Lord saying, I'm the Lord God and I change not. What's the significant thing? Significant thing is, he says, I change not. And the sons, right, the sons of Israel, the sons of uh, uh, the seed of Abraham, essentially, will not be consumed. I made a promise to Abraham that I would bless his seed, and I'm keeping my promise. Thank God for his mercy. Father, we love you and give you praise. Thank you for those that received your son as Savior today. Cover them, keep them, strengthen and preserve them, cause them to know your way. Those of us that are already your children, strengthen us in the walk. We pray it in the sweet name of Jesus. Thank God, amen. Remember this, the God of the Bible, he's real. Prepare for your appointment with him. Until next time, God bless you.